Welcome, so in this lesson we're going to be talking about functions. And the first question we're going to ask ourselves is what is a function? So let's read this definition before us. A function is a relation such that for each x value there is only one corresponding y value. In other words, a function cannot contain two different ordered pairs with the same first coordinate. Now when you first read this definition it should leave you scratching your head a little bit. Once we dive into some examples it will make a bit more sense. But before we get into these examples I want to pause for a moment and consider this little diagram here. What I really want to stress to you guys is that a function is a type of relation. So as you can see here, we've got the big circle that is relations and then within it is a function. So a function is a special type of relation and what we say it's a relation for which each x value there's only one corresponding y value. So just remember that a function is a type of relation. Okay, let's dive into these examples here and see if we can make a bit more sense out of this definition before us. It says, which of the following sets of ordered pairs defines a function? So which of these is a function? Okay, so let's see if we can answer it. What we're going to begin by doing is just listing out all of my x values here. So I've got negative 3, I've got negative 2, I've got negative 1, and I've got 1. So this is my domain, it's just all my x values. So I want you to list them out like this, and then we're going to list out our range, which remember is just all our y values. So it's going to be 0, negative 1, 2, and 3. All right, what we're now going to appreciate is that this negative 3 corresponds to the 0, doesn't it? Because that's what this coordinate is telling me. When I put negative 3 in, I get 0 out. This negative 2 corresponds to this negative 1. That's what the coordinate is telling me. And so on. Okay, so with this information, can we determine whether or not this is a function or not? And we can. This is a function. And the reason why it's a function is because each x value, there is only one corresponding y value. So let me say that again. For each x value, there is only one corresponding y value. So let's write that out. The reason why this is a function is because for each x value, there is only one y value. So that's why it's a function. For each x value, there's only one y value. So remember, this also is a relation, but it's a special type of relation. It's a function. All right, we can also uh, just plot these points. So if I was to plot these points, I would have one at negative three, zero. I'd have another one at negative two, negative one. I would have one at negative one, two. And then lastly, one, three. So those would be my points right there. Okay, let's do the same thing over here and determine whether or not this is a function or not. Okay, so how are we going to do this? We're going to approach it the same way. I'm going to begin by listing out my domain, which is all my x values. So I've got negative 2. Then I have negative 2 again. I'm not going to write it again. I'm just going to leave it. Then I've got 1. And then I've got 3. Remember, the reason why you're not listing out again is because when you're listing your domain, you're just saying, what are the x values? So, you know, it's negative 2. You don't have to list it twice. All right, let's now list the range. So these are all the y values. We have 1, we have negative 1, we have 2, and we have 0. And now what we're going to do is the same thing. We're going to see which is corresponding to what. Well, this 3 corresponds to this 0 here, doesn't it? That's what that coordinate is telling me. This 1 corresponds to the 2. That's what that's telling me. Now, this is where things get interesting. This negative 2 corresponds to both the negative 1 and the 1. Do you see here how it says negative 2 to negative 1 and this says negative 2 to 1. So that means I have uh, one x value that corresponds to two different y values. This means this is not a function. So let's write that down. Not a function. And we'll write down why it's not a function. The reason why is because there is an, no, a, a x value, an x value? There is an x value with two 
different y values. And that violates our definition of a function. Because remember, a function, there, uh, for each x value, there is only one corresponding y value. Well, for this one, we have an x value with two corresponding y values. So that's why this is not a function. Remember, it's still a relation, but it's not a special type of relation called a function. Let's now graph this. So we're going to plot these points. So I have negative 2 corresponds to both 1 and negative 1. So negative 2 corresponds to both 1 and negative 1. Then I've got 1, 2. Uh, 1, 2 is there. And then I have 3, 0, which would be over here, 3, 0. Okay, now you're probably thinking, why are we sketching these or plotting the points? Can you see something here that makes this different to our function? Is there something happening here that we could identify that this isn't a function just by looking at it? And hopefully you said yes. And hopefully you realize that, hey, maybe we could say that this isn't a function. Because do you see here how I have two dots that are vertically aligned. And this is telling me that one X value has two corresponding Y values and therefore it isn't a function. So we could use this graphical approach to identify whether or not we're dealing with a function or not a function. If, as I said, we have two points that are vertically aligned because that's telling me that one X value has two corresponding Y values. Over here, do you see how nothing was vertically aligned? They're all kind of by themselves. Nothing is vertically aligned. So therefore it's a function. But over here we have two things that are aligned together, which is telling me one X value has two corresponding Y values. So what we can do now is formalize this. And what this is known as is the vertical line test. So here it is right here. This is called the vertical line test. And it's literally what we did up here. So if a vertical line can be drawn anywhere on a graph, and it only ever intersects the graph a maximum of once, then the relation is a function. Identify which of the following which of the following are functions. So let's give this a go here. So what the vertical line test tells me is if I can draw a vertical line anywhere through the graph and it only ever intersects it once. See how it's only ever intersecting it once? That tells me that this is a function. would come over here. If I can draw a straight line anywhere through this thing and it only ever intersects at once, it's telling me it's a function. We come over here and do you see how if I was to draw a line here, it goes through it twice. And I've given you an example here. So this might be uh, x is equal to 1 and it's corresponding to both a 1 here and a negative 1 there. So 1x value, and I'll highlight this, has two corresponding y values. So I've got the same x value here, one and one, but I'm getting out two different y values. I'm getting out a one and I'm getting out a negative one. And that can be graphically seen here because when I draw a vertical line through it, I'm getting two points of intersection. So that means this is not a function. Not, whoopsie daisy, not a function. So to over here, I could draw a line anywhere through this and I'm going to hit it twice. So if you can draw a line anywhere through a graph and it hits it twice at some point, you know you, that you have not got a function. And I've given you an example here, zero corresponds to one and zero corresponds to negative one. So again, not a function, not a function. Okay, so that is the basics of what a function is. Hopefully you found uh, this useful and it's helped you kind of get your head around the initial definition of what a function is. And also very importantly, how a function is related to a relation. Remember a function is a type of relation. So I don't want you to create this false dichotomy that you've got functions as opposed to relations because everything is a relation. And then there are certain relations called functions for which each X value, there's only one corresponding Y value. Hopefully that made sense and I'll see you in the next part.